Alright, that's my Mafia. We're back with episode 4 now of Despawn Makes Food. We are making a pork steak. Right? Pork steaks. We're going to be taking these pork steaks and we're going to make them taste as good as a regular steak. The difference between a regular steak and this pork steak is you'll keep that flavor throughout the whole thing because of the way the pork is compared to beef. So, things you'll need, you're going to need a cast iron pan. I do my stuff a little easier, I always have, always will, that's what this channel is about, is for showing people a simpler way to do some things that these big chefs do at home that you don't really have time to always do. So, one thing I like to use is a little bit of Hawaiian marinade from Larry's. A Caribbean style jerk. Doesn't matter the brand. Uh, this is great value. It's a cheaper brand. It's which one they have. They don't have the Hawaiian in great value. That's why I go with the Lowry's. You're going to want some teriyaki marinade. Right? And your liquid smokes. So, while I'm doing all this, I'm also going to be doing one other thing to go along with this. Aside, well, two things. Um, I'm going to be doing some baked potatoes, sweet potato for myself. I'm going to be doing green beans. I'll show you what I'm going, how I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to marinate them in a very similar fashion that I'm going to do the steak. Oh, other things. I almost forgot a couple of pieces for the marinade over here in the corner. I would have used them, but I would have forgot to tell you about them. So I add a little bit of barbecue sauces to my marinade. Not a lot. You're not going to keep basting them with this. But this Duke's Georgia Sweet Heat, you can use whatever barbecue sauce you want. Tennessee Smoked Whiskey and Hickory Moonshine. Why? Because they all have a little bit of additive that are going to add kind of a smoky flavor. This is for those of you that don't have a grill, you don't have a smoker, so you're having to come up with ways to do it to make it taste like a steak. You can use the same method on your regular steaks too. This is just a way to add that smoky flavor without having the smoker or a grill to do it. I'm also going to show you throughout this cooking channel show episode, however you want to call it, we're going to be showing you how to cook those without having the grill as well. To get that same grilled effect, get that charred taste, these are to help it intensify and give you that smoky flavor that you get from those without even having it. So, the other thing is this is going to be kind of a collaboration type episode. This is going to be a kind of a behind the scenes thing that I'm going to be doing for Death Bond's gaming channel. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm making chocolates, spicy chocolates. It's going to be a Russian roulette. I was waiting for one more, maybe two more votes on what kind to use. But as it is right now, Scorpion Pepper is the winner. Lucky me. Yeah, I, no matter which way I go, it's not lucky me. But, scorpion pepper on a Scoville unit level is not near as high as Carolina Reaper. So, here it is right here. I'm about to see if it has the Scoville level on here. It doesn't specify which Scoville unit level it's at. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to be adding to some chocolates. I am, yes, going to be making from scratch. I'm not just melting Hershey chocolates. Nothing like that. This is going to be the first time for me. Some ingredients you'll want for that. Some raw honey. Some vanilla extract. Shredded rotisserie chicken or pork. No, I'm just kidding. You don't need that. But you do need cocoa powder. 
Let me show you the real container. That's my already pre-made uh, quantities. I'll explain quantities next. But cocoa powder, right? Where's the last one? There it is. And coconut oil. So it's actually kind of simple, the ingredients that you're going to need to make it. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into all this. We're going to start off with getting the marinades, so we can go ahead and get the meat marinating. So, the way I do it, I use a Ziploc bag. I don't have a air seal tight one. I just had my Ziploc bags. What did I do with them? Okay, I don't really know what to do. Alright. I also will be using my seasoning. That's the only one I'm going to say is my special seasoning. It's a disclosed thing. You want to know about it? Comment down below the description, right? Because in the description, there's going to be all the ingredients except for that one. It's going to say my specified ingredients. Outside of that, you salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and you'll be good. Keep it simple. When you're making your meats, always keep it simple. Mine is an all seasoning that I've created that my wife and I, we just love it. I don't use a lot of salts. Because I don't use a lot of salts, to be honest, I've boosted this type of seasoning to have more flavor to help make up for the factor of not having the salt. Now, as I... Oh, welcome back, Dust My Mafia. Alright, so, as I already said at the beginning, this is episode four. This is the best steak ever. Yes, it's a pork steak, but I'm telling you, it's a steak that'll blow your mind. Make it the way I'm telling you. You'll never regret it. Remember, my channel is made to be simple. To be able to make take things that are on a cheaper way and make them taste great. While staying cheap. <clears throat> In the future, you'll see that with ramen. And many other things. Such as like with this pork steak. So... Bear with, this episode is also the first time you'll see like a behind the scenes thing like what I'm doing on creating for my gaming channel, my punishment portions. I decided to do some Russian roulette chocolates, so regular chocolates and spicy chocolates. And here I am being an idiot right now, wasting y'all's time, not having things already pre-opened and ready to go. Remember, the description down below will have... A link to, mer to the merchandise and everything else that you can find that I am wearing there. But also remember that uh, down in below in the description will also have all the ingredients. Except for the seasonings. It'll just say salt, pepper, so on and so forth. Stuff, small stuff like that. And it'll state that I used my special seasonings. If you really want to know what that special seasoning is like, message me directly and I will get back with you on that but uh, there's gonna be a lot of talking throughout this anyway so I'm not gonna be really kinda jumping in a lot on this so I hope you enjoy and also I apologize for the length this one's gonna be a little longer than usual due to the factor of the chocolate making as well so yeah just kinda bear with it's gonna be a little longer and I apologize So now I've got a tie. I've got ties for Carolina Reaper and Scorpion Pepper. So I'm going to let the vote stay on for now. I've got one more person that needs to vote. We use them as my tiebreaker. Hopefully they will vote soon. If they don't, I've got one other person that's about to get message right now by the wine owl. Go. Message from Kitsune. Go. Alright. There's no exact measurements to this. Like, for real, for real, there's no exact measurements. I put what I feel I want to use in there. That was probably about a half of that bottle. This is strictly so I can make sure that I have enough 
this worst case scenario, I can always use this for the future for another batch. Right, as long as you're using it for the same kind of foods, it's alright to reuse your marinades. You don't want to use them and constantly put in different kinds. Alright, that's my mafia. Let me let you know a little bit what's going on. Um, there's a vote going on at this point in time in the episode. Currently, still trying to figure out which sauce I was going to be using. Whether it was scorpion pepper or Carolina Reaper. And, uh, kind of deleting some of that scenes because it's just a little bit of me messaging one of the people back. Trying to get them to understand the what I was asking them to vote for. And also, my wife telling me to basically turn off the camera. But alright, let's get back at it. Uh, I'm going to probably get rid of a good bit of this that's coming up until it gets to the good parts. Alrighty. Like I said, you want to use a decent amount of the teriyaki. Alright, that's my mafia. I'm going to pre-warn you. I'm not going to kill you by making you listen and watch me make all this. Just look. I'm about to add all those seasonings I said to this little Ziploc bag. Season some pork steaks. I will show you at least up to that point where I show, where I season them, how I season them. Like how much I season them and put them in. But outside of that, I'm not going to bore you with these small steps. I'm going to let you see a part of it and then I'm going to just kind of skip through it. Get right to the nitty gritty probably see this video come out and when I season these like I said you can see it nice and well seasoned on both sides Some of this stuff I'm going to be bringing to y'all to show the camera. I don't have a fancy camera where I can just adjust and micro move my tripod. But, in a moment, when it comes down to it's time to start looking at things at just the stove level, I will make sure that I aim it over to that. So here's the bag, right? What I do, so y'all can see it, I will actually angle it down now. And bring it to me a little bit. Alright. I make sure I get all the air out. No, I don't have an air seal tight thing, so you want to just kind of do that yourself with a Ziploc bag. Get as much of that air out as you can. Make sure your meat's nice and spread out in there. Get your juice, your marinade, nice and moved around. Now, you just move it to the side. You put it out of your way for about 20 minutes, like I said. I say about, meaning no less than 20. So now we're going to do the green beans. All right, all right, Despot Mafia. So I'm not gonna bore you with any of this part. This is just the green beans. It's basically like I say, basically, it is exactly the same thing as the pork steak, except for with green beans. And that's it. That's the only difference. So I'm not gonna bore you with this. We're gonna go to skip through all this and get done with it.
cooking time for them both is about the same. So give me a moment. We'll be right back. On to the next part. To you, it'll just look like a page flip. To me, it may be forever. <laughs> but I need to wash these uh, trays for the chocolates and let that meat marinate. I'll be right back and I'll show you what, how I'm making the chocolates. All right, so a couple minutes have passed. Still no quite a sure answer on Scorpion of Carolina. It's still kind of tied right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show y'all how to make regular chocolate. Throughout this time process, hopefully by then we'll have an answer from either Rolando or the wild card. I guess technically they're both wild cards when it comes to an answer. But uh, to be the tiebreaker. Worst case scenario, I have an option for that, but we'll get there when we get there. We're gonna go ahead and start on this regular chocolate. Pull y'all a little closer. Angle you down at the stove. There we go. That's a perfect angle. Give me a second. Ah, oh yeah, I need that. Alright. So the way you do this, you're going to start off on a low temperature, getting your stove, getting your pot, your little saucepan here, nice and warm. I got a little plastic spoon for the moment. You want to take that, oh, I promised I was going to tell y'all quantities. So quantities, things you'll need, this is a 10 servings worth, right? So for 10 servings worth, it's going to be about roughly 10 pieces, depending on the size of the pieces. My servings are going to go into these. So it's going to depend on how many I can fill up with these. So, usually it's roughly between 10 and can fill up that whole thing. You want a half a cup of coconut oil. You want to put that in a saucepan. Get it all in there real nice. You want to start just letting that melt inside the saucepan. That's it. Just let that melt. This is going to take a while. Uh, it won't take as long for y'all as it will for me, but... I mean, if you're cooking, it'll take as long as it's taking me. Or it's going to take me. But... Y'all watching it take this long. This is going to take me to watch it. While it's sitting there doing that, let me go ahead and go over some of the other ingredients you'll need. And quantity wise, now that we've actually covered the actual type of ingredients. So your cocoa powder, you're going to need about, you can use from a half cup to three quarters of a cup. This is going to depend on how sweet and how chocolatey you want it to taste. I want it to be kind of chocolatey. There should be an obvious reason. One of these little devils right here are going to be mixed in one of mine. So yes, I want mine to have a little bit more sweetness to it to help kind of take away from the bite. It's going to bite me. If it's going to bite, I want it to have some good flavor in at least. So I got three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. Like I said, you just want to make sure you're mixing that around. Your next one is honey. I use these little sauce cups, man. These are easy to use when it comes to just having things set aside and ready to use. Right, so I have three quarters of a cup here, or not three quarters of a cup, three teaspoons. Your teaspoon, not teaspoon, tablespoon. I'll get myself right. One tablespoon. That is, I don't think it's gonna cooperate and actually stop glaring. The tablespoons are the TBS's. Why do I have these still out? Well, because, like I've done and said once, I am going to continue. Because I'm gonna have to make two batches. 
You don't need vanilla extract like I stated earlier. You're gonna want a quarter of a teaspoon. That's where I was getting my teaspoons and my tablespoons confused for. But that's what you'll need it for. So that's your quantities. Quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. Three tables, two to three tablespoons of honey. A half a cup to three quarters of a cup of cocoa. A half a cup of coconut oil. While it's doing all that, while we're waiting, or while I'm waiting, for y'all this is gonna look like a split second, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the ingredients for my second batch now. All right, all right, before I forget to mention it, one thing you want to also add to it, I added it a little late, it won't hurt it to add it to it. It's not to the chocolate, it's to the marinade. Um, you do wanna add it in the beginning. You can add it later. So it's not a big deal, but add some melted butter. Um, if you want to get it melted yourself, that's fine. Melt it in the microwave for about 10 to 20 seconds, depending on how much you're marinating, you're using. Um, I recommend at least a tablespoon to two tablespoons. Um, Y'all have seen the one I use a lot. I use the spray butter. So it's already pre-melted. I usually just pour that in. Um, I'll show you some of the things I'm going to be using while I'm cooking as well. But those are for completely different things. That's for the meat. Right now we're on the chocolate. I'm just going to get the things kind of situated, I guess. Alright, back to the Alright. Alright, so now it's nice and melted. I want to make sure I get myself a nice little stirring spoon. When I do chocolates or something like that, I prefer wooden spoons. And then near the end, when I actually go to pulling it out, you want to make sure you have one of these little spatula things here. It's not a regular spatula. This is more like a icing spreader for your cakes. I use it to help pour into the ice trays. So, my coconut oil. It's nice and melted. It's no longer big, thick, white stuff, right? I'm going to add in a little bit at a time. My wife got on to me and told me to use a whisk. I don't really care to. Because I don't like cleaning a whisk. That's why I use a wooden spoon. But I will use the whisk. I think it might help you mix it in better. Oh, oh, oh. Is that right? <laughs> you better not turn that around at me. I'll pile it in For those of you that don't know, she actually has her own little business that she's doing. It is uh, Two Cousins Creating, right? Two Crafty Cousins. Two Crafting Cousins, because Crafty is taken. Right, so it's Two Crafting Cousins. You can find her on Facebook at Two Crafting Cousins. She's also got a TikTok video thing that she does for all that, showing her making them. I was going to paint it around to actually let y'all see it. A little bit of what she's got going on on the YouTube channel. So I'm going to paint it around right now. All right, that's my mafia. Bear with. This is a quick advertisement for my wife's business with my cousin's wife as well. They're business partners in this. It's something called Two Crafting Cousins. Because like you just heard me state, Crafty Cousins was taken. But here's some of the stuff they do. They're very crafty. So I'm about to explain now. This is what she makes. She makes reefs. She does little vinyl cups. Um, stuff like that. It's small things, Christmas decorations, Halloween decorations. They just do a bunch of craftings. Uh, her and my cousin's wife. Try to get it hoe right so y'all can see it straight. But this is the stuff that they do. Another big thing that they do is, like I said, they do the cups. Um, they also do a lot of the weaving of hats, these things with ears, all this stuff. I don't have any of that in my hands to show you, but if you want to see that, check them out on Facebook. Like I said, Two Crafting Cousins. 
Also, check them out on TikTok. They also have a store online. Where's that store website? Why now? Store website. We haven't loaded. No. Uh, we haven't launched it yet. It's on Shopify, but I don't even know how to get to it yet. Okay, so you can search it on Shopify. Two Crafting Cousins. That's probably going to be the best way to get to it. If not, check down in the description down below on this video or the next video. One of the two, and I'm actually going to send a link on there so y'all be able to click to that as well. That way y'all can get some of this as well. Help her out. I'm going to help her a little bit with my streams as well. Giving that back to her. We're going to go back to this. All right. So, doing the chocolate. Alright, that's what Mafia. I'm gonna kinda talk on this one and kinda silence myself in the video because there's a lot of background talking going on. What I'm gonna be doing is I've got my melted coconut oil there and I'm taking my cocoa powder and I'm mixing it in little bit by little bit. Really I wanna do about a quarter to half of it's already in there, so that would give me about a quarter of a cup. It stir that in real good until it becomes more like chocolate instead of clumped up mess. It doesn't take long because it's melted coconut oil. It's really hot, so it's mixing it in real good. So just continue doing that, and then you'll get your perfect little mix. Add in your um, honey and vanilla extract after that. I think I get bored of doing this slowly and mix it all in at once. We shall see. There. I just went ahead and added the rest. Seems like it's mixing in pretty quick and easy for me, so. I'm gonna keep stirring this real good. Make sure you get all the powder. Nice and mixed in. Break the powder down, let it melt until it's all gone. With the coconut oil. Yes, I'm playing. Alright, no, we're going to talk. I'm going to stop playing. Chocolate is now nice and mixed with coconut oil. It's doing its thing. Alright, so I'm going to skip through this because we're going to be sitting for two minutes waiting. Not a lot goes on within that two minutes, so... Just bear with everything. It's like I said, it's a slightly longer episode than normal because this is also has this chocolate being made for the Despawn Gaming Channel. Uh, while we're talking about that, remember to swipe up, thumbs up, smash the bell, check out me on Despawn Gaming on Facebook, Despawn1725 on Twitch, and Despawn1725 on Twitter for any more for Despawn Gaming, and also for Despawn Makes Food through Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Clear the first batch. I'm gonna go ahead and add the vanilla extract. I'm gonna go ahead stove. 
Alright. So now, that's done. Go ahead and mix it in real good now. What I just do with my little wooden spoon? I knew what I did with it, but I'm sitting here like. Get it nice and mixed in. Alright, you don't want it to sit for too long. You can take it off the stove pretty quickly. I don't want really, to really decrease the temperature on my stove. Why? Because, well, I got a hold of the batches to me. You want to leave that like that. And then. Now, we'll go ahead, let's double check my votes and tallies on Facebook, let's see if we got any actual Facebook votes. Carolina Reaper, Carolina Reaper. That's six Reapers, seven Reapers. Five, six, seven, eight, nine for Scorpion Pepper. And I'll make sure to thank them for their justified hate. Alright. So the answer is official. Thanks to Facebook. And let me thank Hugh Man for his votes and his comments yes you know what hey I pay Facebook to make a decision to help me make a decision to you it may be spam to me it's not this is my channel this is what I am doing for some extra just to have some fun right if you don't like it that's fine I love it and I'll take all your feedback negative and positive Alright, so back to the channel. Now we're going to do the spicy ones. Alright, that's my Muffy. Let me clarify a few things on what was going on. So I was checking my Facebook because I had did a boost post to help speed up the voting process. And um, I got a few hate emojis, which is fine. It's not a big deal. And one in particular individual, Human, continued to send a bunch of hate comments as well. Also, that's fine. I want all my viewers to know, good or bad, however you feel, I will listen. I'll take into consideration. But when it comes to something like that, I don't do my channel for one individual. I do my channel for all those that enjoy what I do and enjoy watching what I do. Whether it be my gaming channel or my cooking channel here on Despawn Makes Food. All of Despawn Productions are made for the enjoyment of the viewer not for an individual 
I enjoy what I do and I will continue to enjoy what I do from now to the end of this channel so until then man y'all enjoy the rest of this video and please give me all your feedbacks alright that's my mafia this is the exact same steps I just went through it's gonna be half a cup of coconut oil being melted adding three quarters of a cup of cocoa until it turns to chocolate and then waiting two minutes adding vanilla extract and adding the honey to it so I'm not gonna bore you with having to watch me do that again just giving you a heads up that's all this is about except for now I'm gonna add some scorpion pepper sauce I'm just gonna take a little bit of this Wagyu beef tallow look you can find this on Amazon I'm gonna leave a link down in the description down below for you to be able to see speaking of the link and just down below let me also remind y'all to swipe up thumbs up smash the bell to subscribe while you're there remember look you're seeing me make these spicy chocolates right why don't y'all check me out eating them on death spawn gaming on facebook or you can also find me on twitch at Despawn1725 or on Streamlabs which I will have a link down below as well to the Streamlabs it's where you'll also find all the merch for both Despawn Gaming and coming in the next month and month and a half Despawn makes food merchandise so I'm taking this beef tallow I'm kind of spreading it across real quick the cast iron pan why I'm not frying this I don't want a lot of it I want a decent amount but I don't want it everywhere right so I've already seasoned this once and cooked it that way but this is just basically to help give it more of a beefy taste to that pork <laughs> See that I'm not lying. Half teaspoon. Lord, what did I do to myself? Deserve all the love. This chocolate's gonna give me. It's love. We're gonna go with this love. You wanna know why? Because I want it to be love. Oh boy, it's so spicy. Now we'll use the rest of this. That cleans up nice and good for me. Boom. That heat will help. You're wondering why haven't I preheated the oven yet? I know it's going through your mind, that's my Mafia. There's a really good reason to that. You will see here in a moment that really good reason. Because as soon as I get these chocolates into the Refrigerator. I'll be explaining that part. Alright. Only because I am a fair sport. that I cannot taste any spice to it at all. Alright, that's my Mafia. So here in this moment, what's going to happen is I'm going to be showing you these chocolates. I'm about to take them and put them in the fridge for two hours. The one with the red label is the spices, the liquidy, nice and perfect looking chocolate right there. That's the regular chocolate. 
So, I kind of skipped the process of me putting it in there and kind of going read through the cooking. The only parts I showed is where when I stopped to re-add the um, hot sauce because I didn't put enough in due to spice levels. I went ahead and put that in there so you could see, hey, that I did add a lot more than what I was originally going to because of that. Alright, so right here, I kind of skipped a little bit just because it was mostly me telling you what I'm going to be doing next. But that's all it was. Um, I'm also going to be doing right now the main part of this video that you came to watch. This is going to be the best steak ever. This is the uh, pork steaks. I'm taking the mushrooms, putting them in a saute pan, putting the steaks in a saute pan. And then uh, I'm also going to be doing a lobster bisque. And some green beans. So right now I'm just going ahead and throwing these in the cast iron pan. What I'm about to do is I'm about to open up the stove. When I get everything prepped. And that is when I will start the preheating process. Why? Because I want them to cook on the inside of the meat. I'm going to put it on the lower rack. I'm going to put it on broil. And put start. All the heat's going to be originally radiating from the top. So while it's in there... It's going from 0 to 500 degrees the whole way through, and that's going to help cook it in the center of the meat real good. And that's what's going to, when you get to that point when you put it up top, that's going to char it and give you that grilled look and texture. But you'll see that. I'm kind of skipping ahead. I just wanted to give you an idea of what's going on, what you're seeing here, what you've missed. So, I'll let you give at it. I'll let you just see what's going on here but I'll be cutting back in here soon Sometimes a little bacon grease, something like that. But never will you see me use a vegetable or canola on my pan for my vegan friends. I really don't have a substitute for this for you guys. If there's a substitute pork, or maybe you just want to use a uh, vegan type steak, you can do that. Don't use the real butter when you use, when you cook your cast iron pan. I almost got my mushrooms in there. Ah, now. Here is the cool part on how to grill really well in your stove, just using your stove. As y'all have seen, I still haven't turned it on. I'm going to put both of them in there. I'm 
go ahead and stick this in there as well. Then just push broil. Depending on your type of stove, you may have to tell it to start like I do. I can't tell you how your stove works because I don't know your stove. But basic easy synopsis of it all is just basically telling it to go to broil. For those that don't know the broil, when I do that, it gets really hot at the top of the stove. So that's why I put the meats down at the bottom. It also gets up to 500 degrees in, inside the stove. So because it gets up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, if you put it down at the bottom where the heat's not starting, it'll go ahead and start cooking the meat all the way through. And as it's cooking the meat all the way through, by the time it hits the top of that buzzer, you'll be good to go. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and work on these baked potatoes, my sweet potatoes. I've already put one and a half cups of water inside my Ninja Foodie here. Go ahead and grab the lid to it. It doesn't matter if you got a Ninja Foodie, an Instapot, it's the same thing. One's just a name. That's it. That is your difference. Like legitimately, that is literally the only difference is that one is a name brand, one is not. Alright, so I'm going to have to correct myself. I said one's a name brand, one's not. They're both name brands. It's just the factor of the type of brand. One is more of a fancy name, such as the Ninja. The other is just a more common name of the Instapot. Alright, now that the wine out is gone, I'm going to barbecue that chicken real quick, or that, that pork, to put inside the potato. I'm going to do a barbecue pulled barbecue pork baked potato for her. I didn't feel like pulling it. See, I'm already doing a lot of cooking as it is. So I went ahead and just bought it from Walmart from their deli area. You can do that too. It's a real quick way to do this. It's really good pulled pork. I'm going to add just a regular barbecue to it. I'll be done with it. We're going to do that right now together, guys. Don't worry, you can do that with your ninja for me, or you won't hurt it.
Alright, so what has happened thus far, that's my mom here, is you saw, you heard me kind of whispering, what I was whispering about, in case it was not really picked up on that mic very well, with me trying to hide the fact that I had bought some pulled pork, which I made a joke about at the beginning of the video, saying I was going to need that for the chocolate, it was basically something I could use and say to pick at my wife, showing her that, hey, you know, yeah, I bought that for that. And when in reality, what I was, I bought it as a surprise for her. She loves barbecue pulled pork steak, or baked potatoes. So I went ahead and bought that. I was going to surprise her with that. And um, so I did that, prepared it. That's all good to go. That's what you would have seen in a little bit more just behind the scenes stuff happening that I got rid of. But uh, right here what I'm doing was I prepared the skillet. I got the green beans in there now. I just seasoned it. I'm about to check the stove. Just check on the meat and the mushrooms that I had put in there. Uh, I am going to pull the mushrooms out. They are completely finished. The pork steaks aren't quite there. But when they are, I'll pull them out and I'll show you what you're looking for to know. Alright, now it's time to put it on the top rack. And go ahead to continue from there to actually give it a grilled look. I do believe I'm about to show you these mushrooms. If that is the case, you know, if you like mushrooms, these are top mushrooms that you can get. Look at them perfectly grilled mushrooms. Mushrooms are done. Now what I'll do is take a little bit of that beef tallow, a little bit of that butter. And I'll just stick this back in the end when I'm done. Picking everything up. Spread those across. I'm gonna switch over hands because my left hand is my my grabby hand. This is my do everything hand. The one that's got all the ability to move. So, best way to wash your cast iron pan that I have found. If y'all know a better way, that's great. Is to go ahead while it's still hot. Get a little bit of water in there. Get it nice and clean right then and there. Those of you that love mushrooms, man, tell me those are not beautiful. What we're doing now, down here, we got the skillet. I'm gonna increase the temperature some. Really start getting those beans to start kind of cook now. Steaks are looking good. We're gonna continue to leave it at the bottom for now. Alright, so that's why Mafia, what has happened since I flipped the page? Um, some stuff. Basically, I'm getting this lobster bisque ready. I'm letting y'all know, you know, this is like a rich man's cheat meal. So, what you do is you just go to Walmart and you go to their marketplace and you buy this lobster bisque. Um, what I do is I put it in a pot instead of microwaving it. And then I'll add some, like, a little bit of quesadilla cheese to get it nice and stretchy and cheesy and then I'll actually as well as add maybe a little bit like um, the Fiesta blend because the Fiesta blend has a couple of other cheeses to add more flavor to it and I just mix that in real good now I put to the side was the cup 
Why? Because I'm going to utilize it as our bolt. The way we'll make this lobster bisque my way, add a little bit of quesadilla cheese, a little bit of taco blend. Oh, there I go, repeating myself. I already told him that, old chap. Alright, that's how you do that. hands again because got some of that on me and well I love lobster bisque but you see what I'm doing I'm depressurizing my ninja foodie so I can open it up and look inside and check the potatoes That is the case. I'm going to pull the big potatoes out. Put them on that bottom rack. pork steaks back out and flip it up. when it comes out all it's doing is cooking
I just my mafia, so I don't know why I decided to get quiet on y'all in this in particular scene. Like, why I wasn't giving you any kind of description of what was going on. So I pulled the pork steaks out because they were good on one side, and now what I'm doing is I got them sitting on the stove door. It's the one place I know I can put those um, cast iron pans that aren't going to hurt it. And uh, I'm currently, I'm just flipping them. I'm flipping the pork steaks, trying to get them in there good. To where they will cook properly. I was struggling for a moment because one of the pieces apparently had flipped when I first put it in there. So it was like twisted. And one side was the other side. So basically the front and the back on a piece of it on each side of it was being cooked. So then when I tried to flip it, it didn't want to flip right. So I don't know why I went quiet on you guys. But that's what was going on, and now we're about to work on the beans some more. barbecue sauce and a little bit of that other portions it will do it boom we have four beautiful pork steaks sitting here in front of me now all right y'all so because of the skillet and the stove everything going on at once it did set off my alarm because it was a lot of heat and a lot of stuff going on at exactly the same time it kind of sucked but it only did it for a second and then it immediately stopped so Downside is like right now, I don't have enough room in this kitchen. Look how beautiful. Tell me that it's not a gorgeous set of steaks. Alright, that's my mafia. So right now I have decided at this point to actually grill the green beans. The skillet was just going a little too slow. There's nothing wrong with that. You can leave them in the skillet. It just takes longer to cook it. This is, makes it a little faster. Take the cast iron pan that you cook the pork steaks in. And you're doing this because you got the juices from the pork steak. You got the marinade still in it. So you don't have to re-clean it. You don't have to start all over from scratch. 
take the green beans, put it in the skillet, and then just like you did before, put it in at the top rack and go ahead and cook it that way. Brand new silicone glove. Why? Because the other one's been heated up enough. Go ahead and pull this out. Set it right there. Y'all want to know what I, what it looks like? That is perfect green beans. Real. All right, so these baked potatoes are just being stubborn. They're not wanting to cook, so no, they're not quite done yet. The sweet potatoes are done, but the baked potatoes, just like I said, they're being stubborn. They're not wanting to cook. So I'm going to give them just a little bit longer. Uh, my wife will come in. She'll check to make sure that they're good for her because that's who they're for. And, yeah, so what I'm about to do is I'm about to drain all this marinade so they're not all slimy and stuff like that on the beans. And then the beans will be completely done and they're going to get plated. Boom, that's how you do that seasoning portion when it's cooking or while you let your, let me go ahead and put this up to me. We're done cooking, look. I appreciate you staying with me. This is Despot Makes Food. Remember, swipe up, thumbs up. Remember to press, smash that bell down below. About to make the potato. Give me just a second that you see that. Alright, that's my mafia. There it is. I'm about to angle this down better. So I can do a nice good review. There's the pork steak. Got a potato. Some mushrooms. And there's those lovely green beans. This was episode four. The perfect pork steak, or the perfect steak is what we're gonna call it. This is episode four, the perfect steak. Remember Despot Mafia. Until the next episode, Despot Mafia, peace out.